Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Before I get into the substance of my contribution, like the, the comrades before me, I wish to extend a warm and hearty um, International Firefighters Day to all the firefighters, the, the, the fire chief, and also all of the men and women who work in the front line, all of the men and women of the, of the fire service, the St. Lucia Fire Service. In the constituency of VA4 North, we have many firefighters, and I wish them well. And I pray that their professional development continues. Mr. Speaker, I also wish to join my, my colleagues in extending heartfelt condolences to former Senator Joachim Henry and hope that his fam family in time will find peace. Mr. Speaker, my contribution to this motion on the resolution of Parliament approving the declaration of the state of, of state of emergency passed as a statutory instrument number 38 of 2021 that the extended of the, the ex, that extended the state of emergency for an additional period of 90 days commencing 11th day of February 2021 ending on the 16th day of May 2021 I wish Mr. Speaker to to speak on the motion which was brought before the house to further extend this state of emergency until October Mr. Speaker the member for View Fort South did indicate that the Prime Minister in his submission gave the main reason for the extension of the state of emergency as requiring to impose or to, to use the, the tool of a curfew. The Prime Minister also said, Mr. Speaker, that as part of, of his reason for wanting to extend the state of emergency, is to prepare for any changes in the COVID-19 situation. He did say this, Mr. Speaker, in, in the, the presentation of the motion. I wish, Mr. Speaker, to simply start by asking a few questions. First of all, every time we come to this house to debate the extension to the state of emergency, I have asked over and over again for there to be some proper accounting for COVID-19 expenditure. The government has done so partially, but today, Mr. Speaker, in the Prime Minister's presentation, I did not get a sense that the government, again, is willing to, to come straight up with the people of St. Lucia to express or to explain the expenditure which has which has taken place in relation to COVID-19. Has there been any accounting for the COVID-19, any complete and proper accounting for the COVID-19 expenditure? Not today, Mr. Speaker. Is there an update today on the conditions at the Victoria Hospital, at the Victoria Respiratory Hospital? Did we hear today, Mr. Speaker, of any updates in relation to the non-functional x-ray machines that were not working at the OKEU and the St. Jude Hospital? No, I did not hear anything relating to that. Mr. Speaker, was there any report by the Prime Minister on the, on the health sector in general, which has been reeling, especially because of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic? Are there any changes with the arrangements for, for future Confused, Mr. Speaker. Have we ramped up tracing activities over the last few months, Mr. Speaker? And what, what is the report in relation to that? Any other information on, on isolation facilities which we have been clamoring for? House to house outreach, Mr. Speaker. What is, what is the update on this? And the suggestions earlier by the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association to include both workplace and faith-based organizations in the outreach 
There is no report on this in this house. Is there a proper vaccination report? And the plans for, of course, implementing a more effective vaccination program. It has been reported, Mr. Speaker, that even today, if you visit some of the vaccination sites, you can almost call it a mass crowd event with people almost one on top of the other, not being sure what numbers are being called and all of that kind of thing. Mr. Speaker, a member for VA for South spoke to the whole issue of vaccination skepticism and the doubts in relation to, to vaccination. And if the, if the, if the, um, if the, the, the motion or the resolution to extend the state of emergency is being debated here, Mr. Speaker, I am sure that, um, I'm sure that a reasonable person would, would expect the Prime Minister or the government to give some report on vaccination and how they intend, Mr. Speaker, to deal with this growing skepticism which has to do with, with how people feel about vaccination. The Prime Minister spoke about vaccination and herd immunity. And in his presentation, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister, based on what I heard him say, hopes that at some point in St. Lucia we, we will achieve herd, herd immunity. But what what is growing, not only in St. Lucia, but around the world, Mr. Speaker, is a number of people are becoming skeptical. I joined the member for VFO South to encourage individuals to take the vaccine. However, you cannot force people to take the vaccine. And therefore, the government, Mr. Speaker, in its whole um, attempt to ensure that the state of emergency is extended based on the motion, should report to this honorable house on what new strategies can be used or will be used to ensure that we have more coverage in relation to vaccination. Mr. Speaker, the government came to the House, the Prime Minister presented his, the government's case, and the minimum standards that are required for the extension of a state of emergency in terms of where we are at in relation to this COVID-19 pandemic when this, these standards were not spoken about. And so in the, in the Prime Minister's rationale for coming to the House to extend the state of emergency, I expected, Mr. Speaker, for the Prime Minister, I, I expected to hear the timelines and, and the, the, the various issues and conditions which would trigger an extension to the state of emergency, and I did not hear enough of that. Mr. Speaker, I am also concerned as the Prime Minister seeks parliamentary approval to extend the state of emergency, I'm also concerned that we are not hearing of a creative and proactive plan for the rainy season. Again, Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition spoke about celebrating too early. And it is true that we are recording fewer cases, but we have seen this in other countries, Mr. Speaker. Well, people were boasting in St. Lucia, we, we were the best and everything. And in the presentations so far by the Prime Minister, I didn't hear, I am hoping that we are going to have a plan which will deal with the upcoming rainy season. And the the plan for the rainy season in relation to the COVID-19, the extension of the state of emergency, do not these plans do not necessarily have to do with, with curfews, Mr. Speaker, but they have to do with the management of COVID-19. How, how do we better manage COVID-19 so that we don't see a spike in the rainy season? A lot to do with education, a lot to do with the, the public health system, and we saw in the United States of America what happened during the winter season. So an extension of the state of emergency by itself, Mr. Speaker, may not necessarily deal with this if the government does not have the correct strategies to deal with the public health issues that will arise as we approach the rainy season. So what will be different this time? 
What will be different this time, Mr. Speaker? There was this whole debate, and Mr. Speaker, I, I noted that you, you, you did caution that we should veer away from talking about election dates and all of that. But it is interesting that four weeks and a couple of days before the, the anniversary of the five-year term of this government, that they would come here to seek an extension to the state of emergency. I have said so before, Mr. Speaker, and there is this big debate about October and about the date of elections. I am so interested in the fifth anniversary of the election of this government to governance in this country, Mr. Speaker. The 6th of May will be on Thursday, and four weeks from that will be the 6th of June. The time is up, Mr. Speaker. No matter how they try to extend state of emergency, no matter how they talk about October, and everyone is so interested in the 90 days all of a sudden, no matter what they do, they have mismanaged COVID-19, and the, 5th, the 6th of June 2016 is four weeks away, and the time is up. They went to the poll. We, were, we went to the polls on the 6th of June, 2016. Five years is the 6th of June, 2021. And so, Mr. Speaker, the debate on the extension to the state of emergency in St. Lucia, for me, comes against a very sad and unfortunate background. Many St. Lucians, Mr. Speaker, have now concluded and are expressing openly that this extension to the state of emergency is a license for this government to continue what many view as abuses of its authority during the state of emergency. Many view, Mr. Speaker, many view the government's actions. Many view the actions of the state during the state of emergency as selective in its application, Mr. Speaker, and a tool of oppression in various forms. Every time we come out to the House to extend the state of emergency, Mr. Speaker, it is as if it is an, an unreal exper experience. A show for as soon as the Parliament is over, we see pictures all over social media of the Prime Minister clearly breaking the most basic of protocols, no masks, gathering in mass, having been part of mass gatherings. And they can't say that you lie because it is there for all to see. But how do you expect a population, Mr. Speaker, to follow your laws and your rules? And you come to Parliament, Mr. Speaker, to extend the state of emergency. But the individual who's supposed to lead the charge to ensure that these things happen is himself key in openly, in social media, on Facebook and pictures, breaking these very protocols. How, how, do we, how do we explain this, Mr. Speaker? How do we explain this? So it's very, it's very apt when people of St. Lucia who are listening to this debate on the extension of the state of emergency, when they are asking themselves, who are the laws for? Who will the laws be for this time, Mr. Speaker? And if the state of emergency obviously will be extended to October and protocols put in place, the same people who complain and say that one group had motorcade, another group had something else, you see them openly mass crowd gatherings and no authority brings them to account. How do you, how do you balance this, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on a point of order, the thing the no member is misleading the House and setting a very dangerous precedent in this honorable House to say that the Prime Minister is leading out in mass crowd events and not following protocols. Unless the member can substantiate what he is saying, because Mr. Speaker, 
pictures on social media could be posted. Can I use the screen? Can I use the screen on my phone, Mr. Speaker, to Mr. show? Mr. Speaker, where's Mr. my phone? Speaker, if I am. Honourable Member, can you turn on your I had cricket two years before the pandemic. They went out and they posted things on social media to indicate as if that was a recent event. Mr. Speaker, it is the future of this country and that is irresponsible and reckless behavior by the member for View from South. to be inciting that those who are legislating in this honorable house are themselves not following the rules. And the member should desist from doing that. Um, it, is, it, is, it is, in fact, difficult to... I listen to you, honorable member, and um, other members, and it is difficult to assess um, the not veracity of what you're saying. I'm not going there. Um, I take it that you you are honourable enough to to not um, fabricate anything against any member here. Yeah? Um, but it's difficult to assess and to allow you to continuously use social media because one thing our our standing order, although it is not in keeping with the times, but it makes reference to newspaper um, articles, and it should, newspaper articles should not be subject of question. Just per chance, it's, that's the section I was just reading. So it's difficult to assess, honorable member, when you see that um, the prime minister was seen on social media um, during the state of emergency and violating protocols. It is very difficult for me or any member here to assess that because what that can be posted on social media although can be reposted and he may have been, I'm not sure if what you're saying is the same thing, he may have been cropped and paced or how is and, and put in situation of compromise which may See that he was violating protocols. Um, so it's difficult to assess it because unless I see the post myself and to, uh, or the parliament that sees the post in and to assess and know of the occasion, then it's difficult to be, to make a ruling. So I'll ask you to proceed very cautiously so without giving that impression that the parliament, members of this parliament who sits and legislate would in turn violate the same thing. Um, that is why I try when we've been meeting during the, the debate on the estimate not to go beyond the, the curfew period to ensure that we can set our exam an example ourselves to members of the public. So proceed very cautiously, sir, without indicating members here violate the protocol. Mr. Speaker, I don't, I'm not going to debate facts and truth. The people of St. Lucia are listening to me, and they have heard that the member for Castro Southeast and this government denying that protocols were broken. That's fine, Mr. Speaker. I'm not going to debate that. Because the truth is there. I'm not going to debate that. That's, I'm going to move on. I'm going to continue by saying, Mr. Speaker, that the extension of the state of emergency the, st the, st the extension of the state of emergency, as far as I am concerned, the extension of the state of emergency, Mr. Speaker, is an attempt by this government to continue, to continue is an attempt, in my view, by this government to continue to impose and don't press St. Lucians when it is very clear, very clear in our communities that officials are themselves partaking in the things that they say the, or the people of St. Lucia should be accosted for by the authorities. Mr. Speaker, 
I am pleading that with the extension of the state of emergency and if curfew hours are, are implemented as they have been implemented now, Mr. Speaker, that with the extension of the state of emergency, I am pleading for the micro-business people in my constituency and in St. Lucia who are crying out for support because it is very clear that if the government continues with the state of emergency or when they continue, that curfews will be imposed. And if the curfews continue, Mr. Speaker, to impact on the small and micro business people, I would hope, Mr. Speaker, that this government shows that it cares, that this government changes its approach in the extension of the state of emergency to the micro business people, the hairdressers, the barbers, those people with small businesses in my constituency who need assistance. Many of them, Mr. Speaker, may not survive this period. Many of them may close down as a result of the imposition of the protocols. And therefore, I am calling for a government which needs to show that it cares a little more about these micro business people within the context of the extension of the state of emergency. I'm calling, Mr. Speaker, for the government to show that it cares a little more about these individuals who have come down with COVID-19. And the leader of the opposition spoke to it, Mr. Speaker. The conditions at the respiratory clinic improve access to health care, Mr. Speaker. And I guess they will soon ask for the evidence for this. But again, I'm not here to debate and to quarrel about what is fact. It is up to the members opposite, Mr. Speaker, in this debate on the extension of the state of emergency to sit down and challenge the truth and the fact it's them and their consciences. All I do, Mr. Speaker, in this debate of the extension of the state of emergency is to plead with those who can hear my voice to immediately, as I speak, repost as many times as possible those infractions of the protocols by members opposite. Do so as I speak. Those of you on the internet, begin to repost them so that they can quarrel with you and say that it is not true. We post them as many times as possible. Mr. Speaker, I also, at this time, plead, like the member for Castries East and the leader of the opposition did, with our people to do your best, do your best to hold strain, for help is on the way. You have seen in this parliament today how they are challenging what is fact and what is truth. Help is on the way. Even at this stage, this late stage in the administration, with four weeks left before the anniversary of the elections, they are challenging and fighting the truth. Whole strain. Mr. Speaker, I'm of Lady Samadhi Alangle Akoyol. Et moi, quand je suis en train de faire des choses avec les essais, des choses encore. Mais je ne pas faire des choses de la vérité. Monsieur le Speaker, ça m'a dit à l'anglais, c'est que je ne sais pas si ça fait un état d'emergence, ça le gouvernement veut mettre en juillet, en octobre. C'est parce que, quand Chai Mounkadi, je veux continuer, quand Chai Mounkadi, Servi la loi avec autorité pays à de yon manière pour yon kalte moun avec un autre manière pour l'autre kalte moun. Parce que moi dit, M. Speaker, qui même gouvernement qui a mette ce loi en laisse ce protocole là, bah, ce moun cette liste là, ou quand vous allez porter avec les médias, les journal, les électroniques qui yon même kaka ce loi. Mais M. Speaker, yon challenge ça. Avec your dis ça pas vrai. Honorable member, that part you will remove.
We'll withdraw that part, though you said it in Creole. Um, that's the same thing, I, same statement I guard you against. Uh, but you've said it directly now. So I'm asking you to withdraw that, that members here, or members of government, that have that same, that passes the legislation, are the same members that are breaking the law. So I ask you to withdraw that statement and continue. Mr. Speaker, I do my party that say no, 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 so no, I no, 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 I didn't ask you to repeat what I say. I withdraw, Mr. Speaker. Very well. And, and thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.